One of the important foundations of cryptography is ensuring that when someone sends data to a third party, that that third party is able to verify that that information really came from the sender. This is something that we think of all the time as part of a contract. We sign a contract at the bottom. It's our name. It's our signature. And if somebody was to look at this contract later, they could see our signature and could reasonably say that the contract was signed by us. Just like our signed contract, we have a similar set of features in cryptography. And today, we'll look at how this non-repudiation works using proof of integrity and using proof of origin with high assurance of authenticity. Proof of integrity means that any data that we've received, we can verify that it's exactly the same data that was originally sent. This means that our data is accurate, consistent, and we know that nothing inside of the data we've received has been changed. In cryptography, we can accomplish this by using a hash. A hash is a short string of text that we can create based on data that is contained within the plain text. This is sometimes referred to as a message digest or something like a fingerprint. This means that if anything changes with that data, we'll have a different fingerprint or a different hash. This is the same as an actual fingerprint. If the person changes, you'll see that the fingerprint is very different. Although a hash is very good at verifying the integrity of the data, it doesn't associate that data with a particular individual. We can verify that the data that we've received is exactly the same as the data that was sent, but we can't verify who sent the data. However, there are ways to provide that additional integrity. We'll talk about those in just a moment. Let's see how this hashing works by using a practical example. There is an organization called Project Gutenberg on the internet, and they have published the Gutenberg Encyclopedia. I downloaded volume one of that encyclopedia, and it's 8.1 megabytes of data. And then I ran an application that took all of that data and created a hash or a fingerprint of that particular encyclopedia volume one. And here is the exact hash that I've created from that volume. Now, if I was to change one character inside of that file anywhere, although the size of the file is exactly the same after making the change, somewhere in that haystack of data, there is some type of difference. But it would be very difficult for a human to read through all of that data, 8.1 megabytes of text, and somehow determine where that individual change might be. But if you perform a hash of the changed data, you'll see that the hash value that I create is very different than the hash value that was original. So if I have downloaded this file, perform my own hash, and compare it to the original, I can see that something has indeed changed with this particular volume one of the Gutenberg Encyclopedia. At this point, we might want to download again to see if we happen to get a corrupted or modified version. Or perhaps we perform a diff or a comparison between those two files to see exactly where the change might be between the original version of the volume one and the version that we received. By using these hashes, we're able to provide proof of integrity. We know if anything was changed when the information was sent from the original sender. But we can also add to this an additional level of integrity called proof of origin, where we can verify the person that sent the data to us. Sometimes you'll see this referred to as an authentication when we are looking at the source of the message. By using a digital signature, we provide non-repudiation. So not only do we know the person that has sent that data to us, but anyone else could examine this transaction and verify that the information we received really did come from the sending party. Just as someone can use a pen and paper to sign a contract and send it to you, in cryptography, we use a digital signature. This digital signature uses a private key that is only known to the person who's sending the data. No one else has a copy of this private key. To verify that private key was used, we use the public key associated with that private key. And that way, we can assure that the information we received is not only the same as what it was sent, but we know that it had to be sent by the person who provided the digital signature. In practical terms, adding a digital signature to a document 
is usually created by clicking a box that says add a digital signature. And a lot of cryptography happens behind the scenes. Let's lift the hood a little bit and see what that process might be that's taking place when you check that box to add a digital signature. We'll start with a conversation that's occurring between Alice and Bob. Alice is sending a message to Bob that says, you're hired, Bob. And the first thing that Alice will do is provide a digital signature before she sends it. The first thing that happens when she clicks that checkbox for the digital signature is that a hashing algorithm creates a hash of that plain text. In this case, the plain text is, you're hired, Bob. Once that hash is created, we now need to have some way to verify that it really came from Alice. And since Alice is the only one with her private key, we're going to encrypt that hash with Alice's private key, take that encrypted hash, send it along with the plain text so that Bob is going to receive a message that says, you're hired, Bob. And then attached to that message is a digital signature. In most cases, Alice is going to send that message over to Bob using email or some other type of electronic delivery. Bob is going to receive exactly that message that was sent. It says, you're hired, Bob, with the digital signature included with it. Bob is going to use Alice's public key, which is a key available to anybody. And he's going to examine the digital signature and decrypt it using that public key. Once that decryption takes place, we have the original hash that was created of that plain text message. And at this point, Bob wants to see if the hash that was in that digital signature matches the hash of what he received. So he's going to perform the same hashing function that Alice originally performed. Bob is going to take the original plain text, run it through the same hashing algorithm to come up with a hash of what he received. Bob can now do a comparison to see if the hash that was included with the digital signature is the same as the hash that he manually created from the plain text. And if that matches, we not only know that the information we received is exactly the same as the information that was sent, but we know that it had to be sent from Alice. As I mentioned earlier, this entire process of creating a digital signature and verifying the digital signature is something that's usually created through clicking a button on your screen or it's something that happens automatically. You normally never see this process occur, but having an understanding of the digital signature process and the verification of the digital signature process can help you better understand the integrity that we're looking for and the proof of origin that's so important when working with transactions like this.